So there is a lot of stuff that I dislike about Roblox's studio interface and you can imagine that it's mostly the annoying things like bugs and the inconsistency where for example you just start Roblox Studio and it hides every single piece of UI on every startup. But I'm pretty sure that the recent changes are going to fix these problems. But as usual leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So there is pretty much a new beta feature about Roblox Studio interface where it almost completely got an overhaul, a revamp or you call it. And this is also an override of the whole core system of the studio's UI functionality. And here Paul from the Roblox staff is saying that today we are releasing a preview of the next generation studio interface. We are rolling it out as a beta feature to gather your feedback to ensure that it will help you be more productive. And few notes about this user interface overhaul. There are these principles that they followed for the new user interface, where they made it intuitive for new creators, a flexible UI system that is more customizable for experienced creators. So overall I'm guessing that there is going to be stuff like the theme support where we are going to be able to change the look of the studio and I believe there was a thread already about this from the Roblox Studio new UI where this interface was actually shown on the most recent RDC event. But going back, it's also made with an implementation of structured design system with a consistent look and feel and also a technical architecture that reduces the chances of hangs and improves plugins workflow. Because I believe the new interface isn't written in C++ anymore and it's actually made in Roblox's Luau. And here is the comparison of the old studio interface to the new one. You can see that previously we had a paste, copy, cut and duplicate from this clipboard tab where it was basically just removed because I haven't even personally used any of these buttons right here ever and it's also not clamped anymore like this. And on the new user interface you can see that you have these tabs on the top right here but there is also this plus button and this one is actually going to be used for creating custom tabs so that's pretty great. Also I don't really know why the explorer properties and the toolbox are right here when they should be in the view tab. And also there are some noteworthy features in this release, like the new design language styling, which includes color-coded icons. The default ribbon has been simplified, there is a completely new menu system, the tabs won't disappear anymore, which is actually useful, and same with the playtest controls, which are going to always be right here. And I know that if you are in a UI menu, you would just do some UI editing and you wouldn't see these icons, so you'd have to switch the tabs and do the playtest from there. And here is a little video preview. And here it says that custom tabs are coming soon. And from this view tab, I actually need to zoom this in. Here you have all of the different studio functionality that was previously scattered across all of these different tabs. Like the weights and constraints would be under the model tab and the device and the player would be under the test tab. And here are also different windows that you can close and show again. But continuing, they basically just call this a modular studio framework which is a modern multi-threaded architecture that makes it easier to build robust studio functionality. And like I said at the beginning, I'm hoping that this functionality is going to let you completely just change how studio looks. And also themes would be a cool thing. And here they're just saying about bugs, that the current UI is just too entangled with old outdated patterns, so I'm guessing spaghetti code, that have been the source of many hangs and crashes. Yeah, because of the bugs that I can immediately just think of, is like every tab just disappearing, the layout going back to the original, the same as if for example just install studio after an update, different stuff just popping out randomly, or for example not being able to change the size of a window. And I'm guessing that there is probably a lot of more. And like I said, they are moving to Luau, which is a Roblox's Lua version. And here they are just stepping away from the C++ user interface, because it gives them a path towards a consistent and customizable user interface. And it also means as they make improvements to the UI, workflows will also benefit the community, building user interface for experiences. And here is the first of many, many updates and improvements. And this part is a bit important saying that this is still under a heavy development, they are gonna keep updating this, and later it's going to become the default user interface, which is currently planned for early 2025. So this new UI design is going to fully replace the old one. And I'm guessing that there probably isn't going to be a way to change it back. And here is the stuff that they are currently working on, and I'm still interested in the customization capabilities, because we don't know yet how much stuff we are going to be able to change. Then this is how to enable this feature which I'm going to show in a second, but I also need to mention that there are some known issues, which I basically just recommend you read, and if you run into any problems you should post them under the dev forum post. You can see that it kind of got a lot of traction since there is like 1000 replies in one month. 
but let's just jump into Roblox Studio now. And the fact that I mentioned at the beginning happened again, but well, anyways. That's basically what I have to deal with from time to time. But now on how to enable the next-gen studio user interface. We just need to go into file and beta features and then just scroll down to the next-gen studio preview, which says enable the preview of next-gen studio core, introducing system menus, new categorization and look and feel of the top bar and upcoming customization features. So we just want to enable this one, press on save, and then just restart studio. And here is our new user interface, and I'm just going to edit in a quick split screen comparison. So everything has a new icon basically from the move tools to everything in the model, avatar, UI and other tabs. And I need to say that it looks a little bit weird when basically the whole top section is reworked, but everything else still has the old Roblox Studio design. But here is the geometric, the part and the material color tabs, but I'm not seeing the import 3D option. And here is a way of enabling and disabling the experiment properties, as well as the toolbox. And here is the part, the terrain editor, the character generator, which should be under the avatar tab, I think, a UI element and a script. So let's just see the model tab. So this is basically just all of the previous stuff that we had. There is different stuff like the effects and the lights, as well as the constraints. And here is the align tool. And under the avatar stuff you basically have all of this previous stuff that we had. Here is the character button again, rig setup, accessory and layered clothing. And then UI, scripting and plugins. And I like how these three tabs basically have their own color palette. Since sticking to this color design is actually like they mentioned intuitive. And these menus right here also got a bit of change. It's kind of throwing me off how there aren't any icons or indicators on the left anymore. Meanwhile, the format document and format selection are right here, but they are probably just going to change that later. So the cut, copy, paste have been set into the edit tab. We also have the group to group as a model or as a folder with Ctrl Alt and G. What? I didn't even know that this was a shortcut. I've been putting stuff to folders manually the whole time. But yeah, how they are showing these shortcuts on the right with the different functionality, this was pretty much something that Roblox needed. Then the view has the device, which I actually like this one being under the test tab. Maybe they should put it somewhere next to the playtest buttons, because it's something that I use a lot, especially when designing UI. And the window has basically all of the different stuff that you can show and hide. I also kind of like this one being in its own tab on the top, because icons for this were also intuitive. And then here we have the documentation, tutorials and the developer forum. So that's basically everything for the next gen UI. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about the customization that we currently have in the studio settings. So you can't really change any color from the studio tab except well the select hover color. The selection only has the dragger and the visualization. And the script editor probably has the most stuff. If anyone is curious about my scripting theme then well here are all of the RGB colors. I kind of just took the PyCharm editor color palette and just put it into studio. But like I said if anyone is interested then here it is. So maybe there is going to be like a new theme tab under the studio settings that lets us customize the whole look of the engine. And also for a quick note, I think that while hovering over these icons, they should indicate that you are able to press them because they are well just great out right now. But I can basically just do a playtest and record my outro. So yeah, I recently published a new UGC items that you guys can check out. It's currently in my group, but that's basically going to be everything for today. So again, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And I hope everyone had a nice day and see you guys.